I'm Terry from La Crosse Technology and this is the WS1612AL. It consists of a display station, a remote outdoor sensor, also known as a thermal hydro sensor, a rain gauge that will plug into this sensor, and an anemometer or wind sensor that plugs into this sensor as well. And we're going to show you how to set this up. Uh, the last thing we'll actually use is the display, so we'll put that to the side right now. What we need to do is uh, plug in our two sensors into the thermal hydro unit and we'll open the battery case on that right away. And it actually says on here that the rain sensor plugs in here and the wind sensor here. So we'll plug in that rain sensor and move it off to the side a little bit. And we'll take our wind sensor and we'll plug that in. And we'll move the sensor off to the side just a bit as well. And we're going to be putting two fresh Alkaline AA batteries in here. We like to use name brand batteries and we want to make certain that the year is uh, correct. So what you do is add six to your current year and the year date on the battery should be at least that date or later. So this being 2011, I'll add six. I'm looking for batteries dated 2017 or later. We put our batteries in here. Close the battery door. We're going to move this off to the side so we can go to work on our display. To look at our display, we've got a series of five buttons. When we set up, we'll be using predominantly the set and the plus button. We turn the system over. The battery door is open simply by pushing the lever towards the door. We're going to put three AA alkaline batteries into the unit. And it will beep at us, which is a good sign. It means we put the batteries in properly. Everything lights up initially. And the unit will then come to its default display settings. <clears throat> While it's in this settings, it will search for the outdoor temperature. And it's already picked that up here. What we're going to do is set up the uh, display settings. We start by pressing and holding the set button until we see LCD. LCD simply allows us to darken the level of the display or to lighten it up. Pressing the set button once again. The time is flashing and we changed it by pressing the plus button. We're going to set this for about quarter after four in the afternoon. And you'll notice that when we hit noon, we have a PM showing up to the left of the hour. We press set again and we can We'll get the minutes flashing. We can set that up. Again, it's about quarter after. If we hold that button down, it'll count in fives. It's very quick when it counts in fives. Pressing the plus button again allows us to choose between a 12-hour clock or the military-style 24-hour clock. We'll leave it in 12-hour. Pressing the set button again, the year is flashing. We're going to set the year for 2011 using the plus button. Pressing set once again, the month is flashing. We'll set it to February. Pressing set once again, the day is flashing. And we'll make it Groundhog Day, February 2nd. Pressing the set button once again, we have a choice of degrees Fahrenheit. Or with the plus button Celsius, we'll leave it in Fahrenheit. Pressing set once again. Our wind speed, we can check, have it in miles per hour. Pressing set once again. We can choose if we're going to have rain in inches or with the plus button, millimeters, we'll leave it in inches. Pressing set once again, atmospheric pressure. We can read it in inches of mercury or pressing the plus button, we can go to hectopascals used by the metric system areas or back to inches to mercury, which is where we will leave this. Pressing set once again allows us to set the relative air pressure. You can usually get that from your airport, your local weather station, and a number of online sources. The plus button is used to count up, the min-max button to count down. Pressing set once again puts us in a pressure warning. If we have more than nine hundredths of an inch of mercury shifting up, it's going to beep at us. Or, pressing set again, fifteen hundredths of an inch pressure dropping, it'll beep at us. We've turned that alarm to off. If you want to hear the beeps when it hits those, you can hit the 
plus button and go to on and you could have used the plus button to set those uh, numbers to higher and lower pressing set once again and we're in our normal operating mode in use everything you see is what you get uh, all of your defaults will show here pressing the plus button will show how will change how the date is displayed or give you a seconds display in the center of the wind scale you notice we have Beaufort readings uh, people call quite often and ask what does that BFT mean the Beaufort scale measures the effect of wind on the water in the creation of waves so likely unless you're sitting right on the shoreline or you're a sailor that's not going to be of a lot of use to you and this is the WS1612 in mounting these outdoor sensors there are a couple of things to note uh, first of all, your uh, remote outdoor sensor or thermal hydro sensor is best mounted against the building on the north side. Uh, that keeps out of direct sunlight and uh, 18 inches or so underneath the eaves to help keep it dry. This little hood unit is not designed to keep it dry. It's designed to promote uh, the way the humidity is read. Um, this mounting bracket, uh, which you're going to need to remove, you need to just press in in a little hole on the bottom here that depresses the cleat and then it pulls off and it's easy to mount on the wall then. Uh, when you mount these you want to make certain that you have a loop beneath the sensor level like this so that any water running down these lines is going to drip off the loop instead of running into the sensor. The wind sensor you want to have mounted <coughs> Uh, five to six feet above the highest point in your building. Um, you'll notice opposite the mounting arm, and the arm is about this long actually, is the letter E. That should be facing to the east for your wind directions to be correct. The rain sensor should be mounted in an open area. Uh, also when mounting that rain sensor you do not want to latch this down really tight. It should have a little bit of a wiggle to it. Uh, that keeps the uh, sensor operating properly. And notice the cable coming out. You do want to make certain that you use one of these small indents to run that cable through like this so that when it's mounted the sensor will be le level. To test sensor, a couple of ways to do it. You can rock it back and forth. And 10 clicks like that should show up on the display as 0.19 or 0.20 inches. A more accurate way once it's mounted is to simply dribble some water through there. Um, it runs out these slots in the bottom so you don't have to worry about ever emptying it. Just dribble some water through there until you hear it click 10 times. Again, you should have when you look at your display 0.19 or 0.20 inches.